Liverpool's Riverside Station was the smallest and probably the least known of all the city terminal stations. It operated between 1895 and 1971, bringing passengers direct to the quayside at Prince's Landing Stage. Towards the end of the 1800s, Liverpool was well established as the second port of the empire and the major port for transatlantic passengers. But the passengers departing from Prince's Stage had to transport their luggage from one of the three mainline stations of Lime Street, Central or Exchange. Worried about losing this lucrative traffic to Southampton, the Mersey Docks and Harbour Board decided to build a dedicated station right alongside the landing stage. A short branch was added to the dock board's own railway that ran the length of the dock estate. Their intention was to allow all mainline companies to access their station at Riverside. In the event, only trains from the London North Western Railway were to regularly use the station. Although they all could in theory, the distance they would have to travel at a slow pace made it impractical. The London North Western, on the other hand, had a more direct route via their Waterloo goods station. Trains heading to or from Riverside would pass through the goods station, then up the Waterloo and Victoria tunnels, ready to join the main line at Edge Hill. These tunnels and the goods station having opened earlier in 1849. Weight restrictions on the bridges of the Riverside branch, the sharp curvature of the docks line, coupled with the steep grades of the tunnel up from Waterloo goods depot to Edge Hill, necessitated the use of two London North Western 060 locomotives. On the way to the docks line, the line briefly sees daylight at Byram Street. This is where the two tunnels split. Before Riverside was opened, the Victoria Tunnel, heading to Edge Hill, had been cable hauled up and gravity worked down. Whilst travelling down the line wasn't too tasking, climbing up with a heavy train was different. The two locos would be working hard up to Edge Hill. To keep the tunnels clear of smoke were the ventilation shafts. This is one of them, now capped at St Anne Street. Another could be seen at Grove Street. And a third at Shenstone Street. At Edge Hill, the trains would enter the tunnel here. Alongside is Waterloo Tunnel Mouth Box, with his 25 lira London North Western tumbler frame. This two tunnel line ends at Pall Mall, where the London North Western Waterloo Goods Station was situated. Trains to Riverside would thread their way through the goods station and onto the Dockboards Railway. This goods station was closed in 1970. All that remains now is this outer wall. Occupying part of the yard site now is one of the ventilation shafts of the Kingsway Mersey Road Tunnel. The trains to Riverside would thread their way past warehouses and quaysides, over Prince's Dock Swing Bridge and into the station. The station itself had two platforms. The one on the landward side was an island, giving three platform faces in all. Between the main platforms were three tracks, the centre track being the locomotive release road. Passengers heading to or from the ships then had a direct covered way onto Prince's landing stage. Obviously more convenient than having to pass through the city streets, loaded with their luggage. Trains to the station didn't run to a timetable, but ran to coincide with the ships arriving at Liverpool. These boat trains proved popular and were to give Southampton serious competition, both with passengers and mail. At the start of the First World War, Passenger numbers dropped, but this was to turn around when America entered the war. After the war, passenger figures returned, with larger passenger liners, Riverside and the railways in general saw their golden era. But the issue of larger mainline locos not being able to access Riverside was still a problem. When the Second World War broke out, it still hadn't been resolved. The war once again affected the station, but the passage of troops saw it remain busy. Bridge strengthening finally came in 1950, but passenger numbers were beginning to show a decline. This decline wasn't helped by the rise of air travel in the 60s. By 1970, trains using Riverside were few and far between, and the Mersey Docks and Harbour Board made a decision to close the station. 
the very last train, a troop train, departed on the 25th of February 1971. The station building was used by the Alaman Steam Packet Company until the early 1980s, but the platforms, now filled in, became a car park. The station was demolished by 1990, and modern offices were built on the site in the early 2000s. Some of the track work of the station still survives today, alongside Princess Parade. The office block ahead being on the station site. Back in the early 70s, the line up to Edge Hill, or a small section at least, nearly became part of the Merseyrail system. A section of the Victoria Tunnel was to be incorporated into what was known as the Edge Hill Spare. This would have linked Edge Hill via a new underground station called University, and into the Northern Line at Central. Building delays and cost overruns would see this plan dropped. The return of large passenger ships in the 2000s also began to happen, but by this time they were cruise liners. Some have suggested that Riverside would have been ideal for them, but the truth is that Liverpool has become a tourist destination in its own right, and we want cruise passengers to visit and spend time in our city not to jump on the first train out and spend it elsewhere.